Well, how's it going everyone? If you're new to my channel, you probably won't know this. If you are new to my channel, then you probably do know this. That I'm not much of an expert at this old camping bushcraft thing. But over the last couple of years, there are a few things that I've learned. And I get asked a lot of questions. So I figured today, what I'd do is I'd share five tips that I've learned for beginners who want to get into winter camping. Because I'm assuming if you're a beginner, probably don't have a nice warm hot tent to go to and you're kind of wondering how it's gonna go. So like I say, there's five tips for you that I've learned the hard way. Still snowing. See how cold it is. Tip number one, check the weather, check the wind. Now, I know if you're going winter camping for the first time, the first thing you're gonna do before you go is check the weather. And the first thing you're gonna do is check the temperature. But the other thing you need to do is to check the wind. I've made this mistake before. I've looked at it, I've had my gear out, I've had my sleeping bag. I know the, the comfort range on the sleeping bag and all that stuff. I've looked at the temperature and the temperature's fine. I know I'm in a comfortable, comfortable range, right? But what I didn't do is check the wind. And as we all know, once the wind starts blowing, it gets much colder, the wind chill factor makes the temperature go down that wind is just taking heat away from your body the whole time even inside your sleeping bag and you're gonna feel much colder than it is so be sure to check the wind because a good 15 20 mile an hour wind is going to make a big difference on a how warm you're going to be the temp b the temperature outside and c where you're going to set up camp now in the summer i i always want to be set up on a you know a nice breezy point help keep me cool keep the bugs away it's great it looks beautiful but in the winter time that beautiful breezy point on the edge of a lake is going to be very exposed and if it's windy it's going to be a long night and it's going to be a cold night tip number two always have more than one way to light a fire on your persons i say that I see a lot of backpackers and I watch a lot of ultra light backpacking videos and a lot of those guys are trying to save weight and all they ever bring with them is one lighter and it's normally in their backpack. If you go on Audible, I might be on Amazon, there's a book that I listen to called Lost in the Wild. It's a very good book. It's not Into the Wild with Christopher McCandless or whatever his name is. It was called Lost in the Wild and it tells a story of two different guys who got lost in the Boundary Waters canoe area over southern Ontario, northern Michigan, Minnesota. And in both cases, both guys got separated from their packs for different reasons. I won't spoil it in case you want to watch it, but they both got separated from their packs. And in their packs, they had a way to light a fire, but they didn't have a way to light a fire on their persons. Me personally, I always have more than one way to light a fire. I always have a belt knife. I know a lot of backpackers don't carry a belt knife, but I always have my belt knife with my fire steel on it. And then always, always in my pocket, I normally carry multiple cigarette lighters. See, even in here, in that pocket, I've got an Altoids tin. Whoop. with fire starter in it. We've got chapstick. We've got another lighter. So I always have multiple ways to light a fire on me. There are some videos that you'll see of mine where maybe I start trying to light a fire using just my fire steel, my ferro rod, and you'll watch me struggle to get the fire lit for 10 minutes. And everyone always comments and says, why not just use the lighter? Well, I always have a lighter in my pocket. I could easily pull out the lighter and use it, but what if I'd gotten wet? What if the lighter didn't work? What if it was broken? And I'm out in the cold, the wet, the damp. The quickest thing that's gonna kill you is exposure and hypothermia. So I always, you know, I always just persevere with it. If I could get the fire lit with my lighter straight away, no problem. But again, what if it didn't work? It's good to have a contingency and another way to light a fire especially up here when it's gonna get really cold. Anywhere it gets really cold. Winter is normally categorized by three things. Cold, wet, 
and dark, right? So a, a fire, being able to light a fire in a, any situation is huge, it's massive. It, it's gonna save your life. Okay, so tip number three. Always bring more than one pair of gloves. I, that's what I do anyway. Typically, I use these leather work gloves. They're insulated and I waterproof them myself. They're all, they come already waterproofed. Now I'm not saying you have to go out and buy like, you know, two pairs of really expensive waterproof gloves. It's up to you. Me, I like to bring three pairs, which people think that's overkill, I'm sure, but the fact is when I'm out in the snow, especially, no matter how waterproof these are, when I'm doing stuff, these get wet. They get soaked through and then what happens at night when things get wet and it gets really cold, is they freeze. And the last thing I want to do is stick these down inside my sleeping bag with me when they're soaking wet. So what I typically have, as you'll see, is these are a pair of really thin uh, running gloves. They could also be liners, whatever you want to call them. But they're super thin. I might, you know, I can be really nimble with them. I can tie knots in them. They're great. Uh, I can stick them down in my sleeping bag at night and when I get up in the morning I can throw these on and my fingers will be warm and the next bit I have a pair of these these are just cheap isotoner gloves that I got at Walmart but they're insulated they're super thin they're super light they pack down super small as you saw I could keep them in my pocket and these are also great if it's really cold because in the morning, depending on what I'm doing, if these ones are soaking wet, they're frozen stiff, and my hands are cold, I can throw these on, and when I'm trying to break down camp and pack up my stuff, my hands stay warm, they stay dry, and it doesn't hurt my fingers. Okay, tip number four is to sleep with your clothes, but also keep your stuff dry. My sleeping bag is a down sleeping bag. A lot of warm sleeping bags these days are down. Now I know they have hydrophobic coatings and all that good stuff, but still, if your bag gets wet, it's gonna get cold, it won't keep you warm. Now there's all sorts of things you could do. You could go buy a dry bag and all that, but most of us have just a black trash bag hanging around the house. And what I do is I use this to line the inside of my backpack and then I stuff my sleeping bag inside the trash bag inside my backpack when I'm hiking in. That way I know it's not getting wet and it's staying dry. And then what I can do at night, once I take my clothes off and typically in the snow and things like that, my clothes will be slightly damp. And just like I said before, if something gets wet in the winter, it's gonna freeze. So what I like to do at the end of the day, when I get into bed, I lay it down and then I'll take my pants and my jacket and things like that, extra socks, extra clothes, stuff that I'm gonna put on in the morning and I'm gonna stick them inside this trash bag and then I'll stick it down inside my sleeping bag. That way they'll stay warm, they'll stay dry. If they are wet, they won't be touching the bag, making the bag wet, which will then make the bag be cold. Simple, cheap, effective winter camping solution and you're gonna thank yourself in the morning when you wake up and your clothes are nice and warm and you can even get dressed inside the sleeping bag you don't have to get out well it's starting to snow a little bit well, that leads us into tip number five and this is a personal favorite of mine wet wipes keep them close or say adios now i'm a wet wipes guy when i go out camping i'm sure a lot of you are you call them baby wipes or whatever they're great you know, you can hit the, the lips, the pits, the dangly bits, as well as service the rear with these guys. But what I mean by keep them close or say adios, in the winter time, when it's cold, keep them somewhere on your persons. Because like we've said multiple times in this video, I'm sure anything wet in the winter will freeze. And I want to tell you a little story about my first snowstorm video on this channel. It was about 25 degrees all day. My wet wipes was full. It was in the top of my bag. It was cold all day, I didn't think about it. I got snugly warm in bed that night, got into my sleeping bag, got all cozy, 
gets to, I don't know what time, maybe 11 o'clock at night. There's a knock on the back door. The dogs are barking, they gotta go out. So what do I have to do? I have to get up out of my nice warm sleeping bag, go out into the woods. The wind is blowing. I'm trying to do my business. It's whipping my bare butt cheeks. All I wanna do is get it over with and get back into bed. I reach down to grab a wet wipe and all that I met with is a solid block of ice. And let me tell you, in that situation, the last thing you want to be doing is cleaning yourself off with a solid lump of ice. So, if you're going to bring wet wipes, you can switch out to TP. I normally switch out to TP and keep a roll of TP in my bag in the winter time. But I also like to have these on me. And when there's slightly empty pack, there's slightly less. I can keep them in a pocket, an inside pocket close to my body. Keep them warm, keep them from freezing, and that way I don't have to meet with disaster when I want to go out and do my business. So there you go, five winter, five, five winter camping tips for beginners that you guys keep in mind next time you go out. And drop me a comment, let me know if there's other ones that you can think of. I'm sure I have many more, but those are just five that I could think of off the top of my head. So yeah and enjoy have fun it is fun winter camping it might not seem like it but it is it is and it's beautiful